Hello, welcome to All Feet Out of WFC. We have our first, second, however you want to look at it. Obviously, Evie Rabdon came in earlier on in the in the year, but I'm going to call it first anyway. Evans confirmed, deal agreed, all of those kinds of things. We said last week with Tom Garrett this was going to be the, the closest one or the next one um, to be announced, and here we are as well. So I've got Megan Farringer, I'm going to say that right, um, Mirror Women's Football Journalist, we're going to talk all about kind of uh, Gemma Evans, what she can add, the feelings around uh, and everything like that. But uh, firstly, thanks for joining us. I think your first time <clears throat> first time on here, I believe. Yeah, but... yeah, this is my debut, so I'm excited. <laughs> um, how are you doing? I'm, I'm good. I'm really good. Excited for the World Cup to start. Um, obviously, no Wales there, so no Gem Evans, but that's okay. We'll, we'll see plenty of England, plenty of good, plenty of good defending. No, for sure. And we might talk about it a little bit, actually. Obviously, at the time of recording, this played a, a pretty good match last, last night as well against the US. So, uh, yeah. quite something, which I'm sure we'll get into. But um, I'll just actually kind of straight off the bat, then, what's your thoughts on this signing overall? Because there's been a lot of, I guess, mixed reaction, certainly from the United fan base. A lot of rivals looking at it going, doesn't make sense. Um, but neutrals I speak to are pretty, seem to think it's a pretty good deal, this. Yeah, I think if you're a United fan, you have every reason to be skeptical. Reading just got relegated and it's like, yeah, let's go get one of their defenders. And they've conceded a number of very sort of dodgy goals. So 100% you have reason to be skeptical. But Gemma is one of the things that I most admire about her is first and foremost, her confidence. I spoke to her earlier this summer after Reading got relegated. She is the first one to tell you that that has no sort of reflection on maybe her. Like this year has been a huge year for personal and professional growth for her. But she also backed herself to go to a bigger club. She said she didn't see herself being in a red another relegation battle. She thinks her ceiling is higher up the WSL table. And I think, especially for United, that's the kind of mentality you need to have from players who want to fight for position because Jim is not going to start every match. You're not going to see her in the first starting 11 once the WSL season comes to it. But I do think that in terms of the mentality, Gemma is something that United need to start recruiting. Um, but yeah, 100% United fans give every reason to be a little bit skeptical about this, but to sort of sail those skepticisms or criticisms or whatever, um, she she's really strong and she's proven herself in the last two years, especially in a whale shirt, as to what her ceiling is next to Haley Ladd in central defense. I mean, a lot of Wales fans, you ask any of them, they would like to have them in the men's team. The two of them have been phenomenal for Wales. And Gemma has 100% stepped up against like some of the best teams in the world and really proven that Wales' defence can, can handle plenty. Her positioning's really good. She's going to be on the left side. For Wales, she's actually like usually handed um, a def like on her full back on the left is usually Rachel Rowe or um kind of a younger player so she tends to do a lot more defending and a lot more sort of covering and and she's very very good at it her speed isn't probably like the top but she's she's good at positioning to make sure she doesn't get caught out too much and aerially she's she's very confident and very good but like i think united even put it in the press release she had what 19 either clearances or whatever it was not not clearances uh what am i talking about <laughs> interceptions clear which is a funny yeah words. yeah so yeah exactly her positioning's good she she knows what she's doing and she's like constantly ready to to improve and i think that's something as well like she knows going to united she's going to improve her craft improve her game she's not she's gonna go there to fight for a spot but united are fighting on all four fronts they need some sort of depth i guess in defense and I think Gemma is going to be one of those that throughout the season progresses to a point, maybe at the end of the season, you're looking at a much more all-rounded defender that is capable of playing on the top level. There's a few things I want to pick up on there. The first thing is kind of her mentality, I guess. You mentioned a bit of it there. Do you think she's ready for that kind of... I'm not. I'm, I guess it is pressure because you obviously talk about United fighting on all four fronts next season. The expectation now at United is going to be almost doubled because of the season that we had last year with the FA Cup and, and pushing Chelsea all the way. She's not, as you said, they're probably not going to be starting anyway in, in like the bigger games, she Chelsea's and, and, and so on. But obviously we don't know. Maybe Mark Skinner's got a plan for that. We don't know yet. But if she, say, doesn't get the minutes, obviously she's used to being that starter and playing a lot of minutes. Do you think she's accepted that by going to United or do you, do you think she's going to kick on and try and take that spot off? I think she'll, she'll kick on and definitely try to to grab a role there. I, I, I 
can't see her just being really content. Just be like, I'm a bench part player. Like, this will be fine. She's definitely going to want to pursue it. But she's also well aware of what United is, of like what the move is going to sort of mean for her and her minutes. Her minutes are going to decrease. That is a guarantee. But also during training, all of those aspects, she's going to have to improve. She's given herself the kind of challenge that she needs to be a better defender. And if she can do that, if she can accept the challenge and and push herself, you might actually see her start to maybe not push into the starting 11 in the, in like in the WSL side, but you know, she might end up being that one that the FA cup it's like, yeah, we're putting Gemma Evans in. She's going to be the one in the, in the back of the back four that is doing the best that she can. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, but I think it's going to take a lot for Gemma. Gemma needs to, and I don't doubt that she has acknowledge her situation, realize how much is going to go into it. And she will like, she's, probably one of the best players in the whale squad at the moment in terms of just accepting challenges and realizing t- like the ceiling that she needs to lift herself to and she's done that over the last two years under Gemma Granger so I think at United she'll continue to do it you'd think as well with the relegations oh, it's something I want to come back to actually no I'll, I'll come back to that I'll, I'll <laughs> go actually something else and I will come back to that one um mentioning the kind of positions and things like that obviously I mentioned Millie Turner a second ago because I feel like if she's going to rotate in and out it's going to be for her with with the form that the is on um and things like that can she cover fullback at all or do you think she's solely coming in to play that left center back kind of I think left center back her? I don't think her speed is going to help her a lot at fullback. I think center back is sort of the place that she she'll be. But watch me eat my words. Maybe maybe I've completely misjudged this, and she'll be able to play fullback. And I'll raise my hands, and I'll be the first one to do it and say apologies to Gemma Evans. I've missed this, but no, I think she's going in as backup for the defense, being able to play mostly on the left. But if she can play both sides, which I think she can, she she'll be able to do it. And I think that's what United are, are looking at and, and sort of using her for. Left footed as well, I believe. So it's another yeah. another kind of option for us. I mean, talking about her attributes there, what would you say are kind of her, her standouts? She mentioned a couple of them earlier on, her kind of her physical presence as well. Obviously, left left footed obviously um, will help uh, United in those games. That's what I said to you backstage before we went live. I think look, working with Letitia could work quite well because we know that Letitia has got a fantastic diagonal pass on her. Would you say Evans has got a good long range of passing as well that can kind of complement the two if you've got a right foot and a left foot that are able to to play those? Or what other attributes would you say are kind of her best? Well, ironically, last night, if anyone watched the USA Wales game, um, Gemma, I mean, if you watched it, you'll know that Wales had very little possession of the ball, which was like to be expected. The US are the reigning world champions. But Haley Ladd and Gemma Evans together, I'll, we'll get into Haley Ladd in a second because that girl is absolutely incredible. But Gemma Evans a number of times would get the ball in the back four and instead of just pumping it long, she would actually try to dribble out dribble out from the defense and then do a diagonal cross forward either to Carrie Jones or to Carrie Holland or whoever was going on the opposite flank. So she did try that a few times and a few times it actually looked like Wales' best chances of scoring or at least just trying to get forward and offer some semblance of attack. So yeah, she's really good at that. She's confident in terms of being on the ball. That's definitely grown in the last year. I can tell you that a few maybe just a year and a half ago, Gemma Evans wasn't that kind of player. And already she's much more confident on the ball, bringing it out of defense, linking up with her midfield and her forwards and spraying those long diagonal passes. So if you just sort of look at her trajectory over the last year, she's improved phenomenally. And I do think that that attribute is going to be something that, like you said, with Leticia, they could sort of do those diagonal long passes and it can be something really positive. Yeah, the reason why I asked that is because that's, that's obviously what United's success came from. Obviously, we know the fullbacks were massively influential last season, but Letitia in particular, those passes to Golton on that side, but we didn't really have it from the other side. Blundell doesn't tend to play that long ball um, across, but if we have somebody else who can step forward with the ball rather than just playing it across the back line. I think I, I said to somebody the other day, I think this can surprise a lot of people if she gets the minutes. But, you know, Obviously, she might not, and it's, it's likely going to be the same back five, well, uh, with Jade on the right instead of on her next season, but it's likely going to be a similar looking. But I don't know. I'm quietly optimistic about it because I'm. For me, I love having players that are foot like their their preferred foot is the place that they play. Yeah. So I'd rather have a left sided centre back who is left footed because then you can play the diagonal. And it's easy to play it down the line and so on. 
So I'm not sure. I mean, it, it kind of leads me on to my, my relegation question, so to speak, because I think when a lot of people or United fans are criticising her or if, if opposition fans are looking at her, the one thing that I keep seeing mentioned, it's nothing about her ability. It's, oh, she got relegated twice or, or three times or however many it is now. Is that yeah. something that can be, uh, obviously, factually it's correct, but <laughs> can it be kind of, I guess, thrown at her? Because you don't get relegated on your own. You get relegated as a team. It's not that yeah. one individual cannot... You know, bring a team down or, or get yourself relegated or so on. And Do you I think that's think a fair in, criticism to put her or? I think it's it's a fair criticism. I think anyone with relegation on their CV, it needs to be acknowledged. But like you said, it's a team sport. And as well, the teams that got relegated, the context of that is important. Reading had been struggling for the last however many years. And Kelly Chambers was the first one to say they did not have the money to be able to compete at any level in the WSL. And they were having to be extremely creative um, Gemma was saying that a lot of times like the players were getting really frustrated with the situation because they weren't having a style or an identity every game they were changing their style to combat whatever team that they were playing and that's also a big issue like if you're a player and you're not able to really like take on an identity and have a style consistently then you're playing like a multitude of different things and things can get chaotic so yes I do think that the relegation is something to definitely consider but i also think it's a little bit unfair to just sort of tag her with that and say oh she's no good also in terms of mentality two relegations in a row that's got to strengthen your like conviction a lot you've got to be able to turn off the noise and at united how important is that to be able to turn off the noise not be sort of persuaded by what's going on in the stands or on twitter or whatever Gemma's very good at that and i think that's going to come in handy as well because like you said it's going to be a tough transition from full minutes every game to potentially having to fight for just like 10 minutes here and there i think that's going to be it actually isn't it because we've seen a lot of players and there's a lot of discussion around united about rotation last season we maybe didn't see it as much as some fans fans wanted to obviously there was pros and, and cons and in, in, in that particular argument around mark skinner and so on um just a very quick one i just thought of it as it sprung to mind i, I don't suppose you know well in terms of her kind of personality off the field and how she kind of fits in because we know obviously millie turner's very vocal at Ella too, and obviously was another one that's very active on on social media and things like that. Just if if there's anything that you know or or have seen of her kind of personality off the pitch and how that how she can bed into the to the squad that way. Yeah, so um, social media is not really her thing. She does tend to sort of not maybe update her Twitter or her Instagram nearly as much as probably other people have. That might change now that she's at United. Who knows? But definitely within the Whale Squad, Gemma is absolutely adored. She's really funny very vocal, very confident. She's very herself. She's not afraid to say things that maybe like might make people like upset. Like if she knows that maybe they had a bad game or things aren't going right or they shouldn't be doing a certain thing, she's not afraid to stand up and say it, which is something that gets her a lot of respect. Um, but also she's just genuinely one of the most hysterical people in the world. She comes from a small little village in Wales. There's a lot of stories there that are just absolutely hysterical. Yeah, her personality, I mean, if you ever get a chance to interview her, I highly recommend it. She will make you laugh constantly. So I could see her fitting in very well in the back. No, for sure. I just thought I'd ask because let's say there's a few players that maybe are a little bit quite on the quiet side when they come to United. We've seen that in the last uh, kind of couple of signings and things like that. So, yeah, fair enough. If she's going <laughs> to come in and add a bit more, I'm sure the fans aren't going to complain if we see some of that side of it as well. Yeah. Um, you mentioned, obviously, performances for Wales. Is there any kind of performances that stand out? So, obviously, the USA game is the most recent um, one. You mentioned a kind of partnership with Hayley Ladd, which is interesting, obviously, because Hayley Ladd doesn't play centre-back for United. Obviously, she she has dropped there when we had injuries in the 21-22 season. Um, but is there any kind of standout performances for Wales? And do you think she performs better in that environment than maybe we have seen in a, in a Reading or a Bristol environment? I think definitely for Wales, she's performed better. But I also think that might be due to just the context, the caliber of player that she's been with. I mean, playing alongside Haley Ladd, that's probably going to help you out quite a bit. So my, one of my favorite performances from her was against France. That was during the World Cup qualifying for Wales. And I thought Gemma Evans and Haley Ladd were absolutely phenomenal. And one of the things that Gemma Granger was really big on was being able to build into a team that can transition into attack. But that comes first with having like a really strong core defense. And Gemma Evans and Haley Ladd are the reason why that is like possible. Because the USA game is fresh in my mind, I watched it last night. Between Haley and Gemma, it was extremely impressive. Haley obviously is going to take all the sort of big plaudits because I'm not sure if you saw it, but she was genuinely like the best player on the pitch for Wales. 
But yeah, I'd say anyone who's sort of doubtful of Gemma, maybe go back, watch a few of the few of the US or Wales, France games, go see her play against sort of like higher caliber teams and maybe go watch her from two years ago and you'll see a huge difference. And I think that's where it's positive and you can see a player that is not only keen to grow, but is actively growing. And then hopefully that can happen. Now, if it doesn't, that just comes down to either the environment or her not being able to adapt in it. But I think this is a huge challenge for her and it's going to be really, really cool to see it. No, for sure. Maybe maybe one day we'll see that partnership for United as centre back. I can't <laughs> see us trying it in the league, but maybe if we're in the Conti Cup groups or something like that, maybe we'll uh, we might see that one. Um, obviously we kind of spoke in prime messages over the last few weeks. We're building a little bit of a Welsh um kind of contingent at, yeah. at United nowadays. So it's it, while we're obviously on the topic of that, we may as well talk about a couple of obviously a couple of other youngsters. Carrie Jones obviously uh, was on loan as well, um, and Saf Middleton Patel as well. Obviously in goal. And, coming up through the through the ranks there what have you kind of made of of those two and, and what do you see i guess or what would you want to see in kind of their progression next season as well do you think they both need another loan out or because carrie jones is getting to that point where united probably need to make a decision on her as to what they need to to do with her we've got a lot of players in attack yeah whether she can fit into that not sure but how, how what have you made of those two and what would you want to see for for those sort of the next couple of years so Carrie's a funny one because I have to constantly remind myself that she's not still 17. Like I keep writing 17-year-old Carrie Jones. I'm like, oh no, she's actually grown. Like she has aged over the last two years. Carrie is still probably one of the most exciting players, especially in the Welsh squad. Every time she gets on the ball, little girls are screaming. They're like, oh my God, something great's going to happen. She's sort of been tipped to be the next, next Jess Fishlock. I was a little underwhelmed with how it all went for club level last year. I thought she was maybe going to like be a little bit more exciting for Leicester especially because they were in a relegation battle I thought there was going to be a little bit more that she was going to offer but I also think that that was maybe like her first taste of that kind of football so for me I'd like to see Carrie I know like she probably does need to make a decision on whether United are going to keep her but I can't see her breaking into that United squad so it's either another loan or she does need to leave and then sort of make herself known in another squad but if I'm United, I would be nervous about getting rid of her completely just because there's a lot of talent there. It's very raw, but there's a lot of excitement. Like when she is able to to dribble, to run at defenders, like the, the caliber and the technical skill that she has is really impressive. And I do think that in a couple of years time, she's going to be something really special. But she does need a year where she breaks through and she hasn't had that yet. So yeah, I think... If United decided to get rid of her, it could come back to haunt them. But at the same time, she's not going to break into that that's that top sort of bit at the moment. So so yeah, and Saf too. It's been a, it's kind of unfortunate. Like Olivia Clark's come in, she plays for Bristol City as the keeper for Wales. So Saf's not really had much time. Like I've never actually really gotten to see her in goal for Wales. But I think she just needs another loan. I mean, goalkeepers they can be out on them for a little bit and then come back in. Obviously, they don't peak as early as attackers do. So. For Saf, I think it's another loan. Get yourself out there. Keep getting minutes. Keep getting clean sheets, and then come back. And United, it'd be nice to have a, a kind of an in-house goalkeeper ready to go after Mary Earp. So, I think that's what they need to do with Saf. Hundred percent. I'd be loaning her out for one more year and putting her in as number two from next season. If we obviously can keep hold of her, we know that Rams has already moved on. But yeah. I... What's your What's your thing with Carrie? What would you say Carrie should do? I... She's another one. I actually thought she was older than she is. Um, when I asked you that question initially, I just double checked because I thought she was twenty-one. She's not. She's still only uh, still only nineteen. Just feels like we've been watching her for <laughs> for for years, but obviously came through very very young. I think she probably does need another loan. Um, when you're looking at her time at Leicester, um, I think she did well. Like you said, I don't think she maybe did hit a, you know goal scoring heights that maybe some United fans probably thought that that she would, but. I think she did well there, and I think it, it's probably another team like that, a team that maybe isn't fighting relegation but isn't pushing for too much. The, the kind of no-pressure zone, I'll call it. So I'm trying to think yeah. of a team in that kind of – like an Everton or somebody like that that's kind of in that middle mid-table WSL. They're not going to break the top three or push the top four, and they're not going to get relegated. They're kind of in that middle zone. Well, you just look at what Jess Park did with Everton, just having that bit of freedom to be able to sort of play the way she wants to. Because like you said, if Carrie Jones feels like, oh my God, there's a relegation looming over us, I'm not sure I want to take on this defender because what if I lose the ball and then they break and then we lose? That does gonna That's going to weigh on a 19-year-old. But like you say, if there's that freedom, yeah, I, I, I'd love to see her at sort of like an Everton or a Liverpool or one of those and sort of try to see her shine a little bit more. 
Aggie Beaver Joe's the other one that came to mind as well from a from an Everton point of view. I see another youngster getting loaned out from from Chelsea there. Um, yeah, I, these girls need minutes, don't they? That's the thing when they're coming through yeah. at such a young age, they can't just be sat around. And I think you get to the point. This is a whole other conversation now, but I think you you reach the point in the development squad where you're too good for the development squad. So there's no point you playing in that uh, division and yeah. those fixtures anymore. She's too good for that. Um, but equally, you know, United aren't going to be starting her, you know, in the in the WSL. We're going to be pushing for, for the title and so on next season as well. So it's yeah. a tough one for both, but for sure. That's what loans are there for. People have an issue with loans for some reason, saying, oh, well, they do well over there. Why did United do it? Well, that's the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> you want them to do well out on loan. <laughs> I think Chelsea do it for normally. I know, like, you know, the, the, even the women's team is sort of turning into the farm that the men's team has, but I think they do it really, really well, sending their players out, making sure they're out on loan. Um, what they just did with Bristol City, grabbing that play, grabbing the defender, Brooke Aspen, and then loaning her right back out where she's going to be playing against WSL teams week in, week out. That's smart business. And I think that's something that United can start to look at and be like, right, we should probably start to not exploit the loan system by any means, but start utilizing it a little bit better. No, for sure. We saw what it did for Kirsty Hansen last season. So if we can have another couple of successful ones like that, for yeah. sure, we need to be uh, to be using those ones. Um, Megan, thanks so much for coming on. If people want to follow you or find any of your articles or, or things like that, where can people find your, your work? Uh, Twitter. I didn't put that down on the bottom. Uh, but it's pretty basic, just literally at Megan Faringa on Twitter. Uh, that's where I am. You'll probably see loads of random USA and Wales content, as well as WSL content, which is so exciting. Indeed. I'll put it in the description so it's easy for people to find. So make sure you're doing all that. Obviously, make sure you're liking the video and subscribing and all of that jazz. Yeah, you've all watched this before. You know what to do. And we shall see you guys in the next one. Yeah.